Good morning, everyone. We're gonna be reviewing the greatest movie, I think, ever. I think ever made. What are you doing? I think a lot of people asked for this review. Who asked for this review? A lot of people, smart people, the best people, important people. <laughs> okay. Okay, so are you gonna do this whole review with this voice? Yeah, what voice are you talking about? This is my voice. This is how I speak. I speak like this. <laughs> In a very masculine voice. But anyways, <laughs> all right, I'll stop. We're here to review The Apprentice, the Donald Trump biopic directed by Ali Abbasi. Honestly, I wasn't sure what to expect from this movie. The media is already very oversaturated with Donald Trump. So is this biopic even necessary? Will it be just kind of like a hit piece or, or will it be empathetic towards Trump? Will it be able to be taken seriously? Well, Yvette, we saw The Apprentice. Were you able to take it seriously? Yeah, 100%. I, I went in knowing nothing, like not knowing what I was seeing mm. at all. She does it often. I bring her to movies. She has no idea what she's seeing. I'm still in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> she has no idea what she's seeing. Yeah, so. I, I go in blind a lot. I was honestly pleasantly surprised at how watchable and entertaining it was. For me, it played out kind of like Succession, yes. the movie, but directed by David O. Russell, but with like a more concise story plot. Does that I make sense? Yeah, I don't know if that's a compliment or an insult to David O. Russell, but I agree. I was quite surprised with how much I enjoyed this. I, I think what helps is that we're not watching a version of Trump that we know him today, but we're watching this kind of like young, still wet behind the ears version of Trump at the beginning of his real estate career, mostly centering around his relationship with Roy Cohen, a ruthless New York City prosecutor during the late 70s and early 80s. I think zeroing in on this early chapter of Trump actually gives us a better context to understanding the person Trump is today. I mean, I don't want to misrepresent the film in saying that it's almost sympathetic because the film definitely doesn't shy away from showing Trump partaking in immoral kind of shortcuts to success, but seeing him as kind of a near nobody, I think it makes him a little uh, relatable, somewhat empathetic. Yeah, honestly, even if you remove Trump from mm -hmm. like the character, it still works as a solid like mentor protege yes. story or like a New York mogul story or like a rise to fame type mm -hmm. of story. You would still be interested in the character's journey regardless of whether or not it's a famous persona or not. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it's similar to the film Wall Street in that way. It's just kind of this interesting story of this world of backroom deals and kind of shady politics. What I was also surprised about is that it kind of feels like a full biopic to me. Like there's a real arc and the biopic does something that I think all good biopics should do and that it taught me quite a bit about Trump actually. And yeah, and from what I understand, a lot of what we see in the movie is pretty factual too. From what I understood from the Q&A, the, the writer seems to be a journalist, right. he's a journalist, so he's very factual in the information he presents. And I was most impressed with the direction in this one. There's a, there's a lot of really great acting in the film, but I thought it was really tastefully directed with the choices that were made and how each scene was directed. Yeah, he really captures New York in this very specific late 70s and early 80s time period. And the film is almost kind of shot like a documentary. Sometimes there's this VHS home video quality that sometimes in the same scene, he'll just switch to different kind of styles of camera and the different cameras kind of combined creates this very unique style that almost feels like it shouldn't work, but somehow it kind of does. Also specifically for me, how he directs the performances was really great, which is why I mentioned David O. Russell in the beginning is because I feel like there's like a really loose style, but he still creates very captivating drama, but in a very realistic tone. Typically both of these actors, I feel display larger I guess personalities or yeah. like bolder personalities in film and they but Sebastian I, Stan and Jeremy Strong. Both. Yeah, both of them. Mm. But I feel like this director was able to bring a more subtle but yet still very provocative performances out of them in this film. Yeah. And I think that made the whole like Trump impersonation work because it felt real. It didn't mm. feel spoofy, it didn't feel over the top. It felt very real. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the performances a little bit because I agree, I'm, I'm pretty hit and miss with Sebastian Stan usually, but this was my favorite performance of his that I've seen by far. I think he was really fantastic. He brings a lot of, of Trump's mannerisms, facial movements. Um, he's got the essence essentially down, but it's not an imitation. He does sound like Sebastian Stan. It's not a full 
full-blown imitation. It's quite underplayed. And I think he really makes a smart choice of kind of leaning into a more lesser known Trump. But what I love is that as the film progressed and Trump kind of rose to fame, he starts to sound a little bit more like the Trump we know today, which I feel like when you film a movie out of order, like that is, I can't imagine how hard that would be to do, but I was really impressed. Yeah, I agree. It was very gradual. It was a gradual progression. It, it was, I think, a really strong performance. I also really enjoy Jeremy Strong's performance. I feel like it's very comparable with the style of acting that he did in Succession. And I didn't know much about the real person that he played, Roy, Roy Cohen. Yeah, Roy Cohen. Roy Cohen. But I found his character to be just so fascinating and the dynamic between Trump and Cohen was very intriguing to me. I really liked their relationship. Yeah. Jeremy Strong is, uh, no pun intended, he was very strong in the movie. Uh, the dynamic between Trump and his character was almost giving me like Midnight Cowboy with Ratso kind of taking the naive Joe Buck under his wing. Maria Bakalova, she does quite a bit in her small role as Trump's first wife, Ivana. Honestly, I could have used a lot more of her, I think. Yeah, she had a very small role, unfortunately. But, I mean, I enjoyed all of her scenes. She was great, but it's just underwritten, I yeah. feel like. So Trump himself, I don't know if you know this, has tried to prevent the film from being released. He sent a cease and desist letter to the filmmakers before Cannes. So while watching the movie, I didn't actually see what Trump would be terribly offended by. He is portrayed as, yes, a son of a rich dad who's trying to kind of get out from under his father's shadow. It portrays him in like this shrewd, do whatever it takes type of guy. But I think Trump would actually kind of probably like that portrayal of him. But then the film kind of portrays Trump losing his hair. And then I was like, oh, there it is. That's definitely the hair. <laughs> but you have to, you're also forgetting that the thing that probably really well, caused right. that no. cease and desist letter is the, there's a very serious, like a lot, a lot more serious damning scene. Yeah. That's probably the crux of this. Yeah. Yeah. We won't give it away, but if you watch it, you'll know what we're talking about. But I feel like psychologically, like I didn't really quite feel like it gradually built towards that. There's a few moments in the film of kind of outbursts that I felt a little bit like it was kind of out of nowhere. I think those scenes kind of like hint towards a darker side of Trump that I I don't know if we see enough of in the film. It just kind of always comes out like, oh. Hmm. Yeah, I can I, I see what you mean with that. Like those scenes didn't progressively, like very smoothly reach that level right, right. of anger. Either way, did it ruin the movie for you, those scenes? No, the movie is is a timeline covering different chapters of his life based on court record and documentation. And the film really lets us learn a lot about Trump, essentially, as it pertains to how he got this bombastic personality. But I just felt like there were still layers that the film didn't peel back. But maybe these are like layers that you really just can't peel because there's only so much you can learn from someone through the public knowledge that's out there. Some, some things are just mysterious. You know, how much can we say we really know ourselves even, you know? But all in all, I, I did like Apprentice. I thought it was really clever in using kind of that mentor protege premise in telling Trump's origin story. I think pulling off a Trump biopic at this particular moment is a very challenging task. And though Abbasi kind of only scratches the surface in understanding Trump, I, I still found myself kind of drawn to the kind of rough and tumble Citizen Kane-like story surrounding power and corruption. So I thought it was, you know, all around really good performances. So I would give I would give it a solid eight out of ten. Same. I'm at an eight You're out of ten, 10 as well. It's a solid directing. I know, but he's he's. He, I I was really I liked the directing. That was great acting on both of the main characters and the female character too. It's an interesting story. I mean, it was engaging. Mm -hmm. The film has a lot of funny parts in there too, yeah. but I do want to credit the hairpiece though in the film. Like Trump's hairpiece, I think it really played. I think yeah. it was good. It was good. It was good. It was not. It was not weird or distracting. It was. It added to to his character. <laughs> so eight out of ten. Yeah, eight, eight out of ten. Okay. All right, let's well, do Oscars. <laughs> let's let us do Oscars. This film really surprised me. This film is actually currently ranked on Gold Derby and Best Picture at number twenty three. So honestly, I kind of feel that's a little too low. I think it has a much better chance of Best Picture than that. Uh, the screening we went to was very packed. So I think there is an interest in this film. I think a Trump movie will be of interest of the members of the Academy. Uh, Sebastian Stan does a really great job. The challenge is I'm not sure it will be anyone's number one favorite movie of the year. 
But you know Vice? Remember Vice? It was called Dick when we watched it. I know. It was actually. <laughs> um, that movie got eight nominations. But The Apprentice doesn't feel like an absolutely like scathing takedown, which may not work in its favor. It's a little bit more balanced. The movie just feels like a wild card for me. Chances are there will be some interest surrounding this film upon the release. But I think as soon as that election passes, the importance of this film come January it will start to feel even more irrelevant. Most likely it won't receive any nominations, but I'm going to keep The Apprentice in the outskirts right now for my best picture. I think best actor, Sebastian Stan, I think he's very much on the table. He's playing a real life person. He's also just really good. Best supporting actor, I think that's on the table. Best hair and makeup, that's a maybe. And then long shot, I think, would be screenplay. So I think the best scenario would be around three to five on its best day. Yeah, I mean, I could, I can see it. I just don't know. It's not like a slam dunk, I think. Right. But it's like, I can see it happening. I, I wouldn't be surprised. It wouldn't be a huge shock. All right. Well, that was our review of The Apprentice. Let us know in the comment section below if The Apprentice is a film you want to see. Do you think Sebastian Stan could get nominated? Hit the subscribe button down below for more reviews and you're going to be doing more Oscar stuff, yeah? Yeah, I'll be doing a full Oscar predictions video soon. So uh, follow me on Twitter. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram. Links in the bio. Thanks always for watching. Until next time, we'll, we'll see, see you at the Oscars. But I would not be watching the Oscars because everybody knows, everybody tells me the Oscars is a terrible show. The ratings are down. They're in the toilet. I'm not going to be watching.